move that the question be now put. Uh, I call the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Madam Chair, for anybody listening to this, they might wonder how all this works. And I saw the uh, member on the other side of the House, Derek Ball, uh, laughing away as Dr Smith was outlining some very serious concerns about the provisions and workings of this bill. So I would simply ask uh, Mr Ball to reflect upon how often he is able to express his own view inside the New Zealand First Caucus at the <laughs> present time. And I think what happens is when people enter Parliament uh, in a party like that that is notorious for turning over MPs, the ability of an individual to express some degree of personal thought is naturally curtailed and we don't need this legislation for its effect to be uh, 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 available to that party. Because I'll ask this question, I'll ask this question. If it isn't up to the leader of the party or available to the leader of the party to dismiss a member of parliament, and Mr Ball wants to con continually say, no, that's not right because 75% of the caucus has to agree with the, the uh, uh, expulsion effectively, then I ask this question. What would happen if Mr Peters decided to expel Mr Ball for a minor thing? Perhaps he had a slightly different view uh, on something like, uh, for example, uh, the, uh, what is it, the, the defence policy that's being uh, uh, exercised at the moment. Perhaps he was upset by the expense that uh, MFAT were going to go to over the, the higher quality champagne and, and uh, more well-formed cucumbers that make their sandwiches for their various functions they hold. And Mr Peters decided, well, I'm not having that. You're on your way, son, right? Is 75% of the New Zealand First Party going to disagree with Mr Peters? Absolutely not. So while I might uh, use very trite sort of examples for what might cause a conflict, if it was something bigger, if it was something bigger, what is it? Not 75? No, it's only 25. It's oh, only two thirds. Oh, it's only two thirds. Two -thirds. Well, it's still a fair number. But, and and it, it makes the point, that even if it was something big, and Mr Ball, who's sent to this parliament and sits here as a free, unencumbered individual under the Westminster system, decides to speak out against it. And the leader says, not having this, not putting up with this, then it's quite clear it's either Mr Ball or Mr Peters. There's no choice. So whether it's 60%, 66% or 75%, doesn't matter. It's going to be a choice between uh, the offending or, or, or offensive party who might just be speaking out for their constituents and the view of the leader. So any suggestion that this bill does not uh, confer extraordinary power over the democratic operation of this country um, into party leaders is a complete misnomer. And I'm sorry, sad that Mr Ball continues to sit over there laughing, although I suspect it's a nervous laughter for fear, for fear that his constant reference, uh, the constant reference to his name in this house might get him a recognition close to Winston Peters, which would be equally fatal, I have to say. Mr Speaker, uh, Madam uh, Chair, uh, there is a m amendment in the front of the Parliament at the moment asking for some definition about uh, what does distortion of proportionality mean? Well, I have to refer back to the breakup of the alliance in 2001 2002. That was a party that shattered. They ended up with Lila Hari being the nominal leader of the alliance. And the constituent parties, New Labour, uh, the, the Green Party, the Liberal Party, the Social Democrat Party, all splittering off into their own directions. Well, under this provision, that couldn't happen if we go with this, if we don't, if we accept that the distortion of parliament can occur uh, through these sorts of events. And the reality is that the Green Party would not sit here today as a strong individual party in this parliament if they had not been able to come together in the alliance and then separate themselves out from that at a point. Now, while they didn't uh, abandon the alliance 
technically, that's exactly what they did. They used the vehicle of the Alliance to get it. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker. the Honourable Mark Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Look, <clears throat> Madam Chair, I just want to carry on from uh, the, the 